I, I kind of want to know your opinion since we've been getting deeper into the time skip. What do you guys think Borto and Kawaki's last battle or that flash forward scene? What do you think led up to that now that we have more information? Well, I haven't really thought about it too much, but at this particular point, I think I, I, a lot of people automatically do believe that, hey, Kawaki is probably going to eventually try to destroy the hidden leaf village and the the village it it probably looks like that because kawaki himself did something to that i originally kind of thought at the beginning of the time skip that a lot of the claw ground would probably have or play a part in actually destroying the village because the way that the village looks it looks like there was multiple smaller attacks and not necessarily just one big attack like how pain did when he destroyed the village so i'm guessing that the destruction could definitely be done by a lot of the claw grind now there's a different thing though I feel like it's possible that Kawaki could team up with the Tentails. I think one of the interesting things about the Tentails is that they aren't really, or the Divine Tree at this particular point, they're, they're called that. They aren't old Sutsuki, and we're pretty, pretty much just talking about that. So they aren't really like a direct right. enemy of Kawaki. Kawaki. Mm-hmm. And, and if that's the case, like it, it wouldn't necessarily be like out of, out of the realm or off the pale that Kawaki does actually team up with the with these uh, divine trees the only thing however mm, would be the, 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 oh, the divine trees in itself they may actually like one of their goals may actually be to like destroy the hidden leaf village <laughs> to like gain information take all their chakra stuff like that regular otsuki stuff but because they're not otsuki it, it could still kind of open the door for kawaki to actually team up with them because they have they possibly not right now but in the future they could possibly have a bunch more resources they could possibly be a lot more stronger and they could actually aid him mm. in taking down multiple other old Tuski members mm. you know i have a crazy a crazy theory um i think that the claw grimer is not going to team up with kawaki i think they're going to team up with amado i think there is a reason why we haven't seen amado lately mm. and if you're if you're hunting for knowledge who's the per- perfect person to provide you with that knowledge Mm, yeah, it, yeah, would, it, would, it would kind of be a model. It would yeah, kind yeah. of be a model. What do you What do you think, San, Sanjay? Like, as far as like the um time skip, it's like what it was their conflict. Um, well, similar to Bar, I haven't really like given it much thought as of late, but I, I do like that the point that Bar brought up in terms of potentially Kawaki and the Shinju actually teaming up never thought about that before but it does make sense since they're not Mm -hmm. explicitly otsutsuki Mm -hmm. um which kind of goes back to what i've been thinking if we're gonna like finalize if there are completely different species or are there like just experimentations from off the otsutsuki are they things that have been mutated on the otsutsuki home world to suit that purpose um but yeah i do like the idea of kawanki and the shinju teaming up but in terms of like Boruto and Kawaki's fight on the cliff, the fact that he wants to seal Boruto away now. Since Kawaki is okay with himself dying at the end of all of this, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's more along with what Baro is saying in terms of tw- the Shinju and Kawaki teaming up to probably go up against the Otsutsuki. But... um. He probably strikes a deal with the Shinju that, okay, I'm going to seal. I, I can't let you guys have Boruto just yet, so I'll seal him away. I'll work on sealing him away. And as a deal, I'll you know probably give you Boruto at the end of all of this more than lightly until it's all said and done. I, that's still not enough, I feel, but probably something along those lines. Right. Mm. I think right now, based off of what we know, I think it's fair to say that they're not Otsusuki. Because you can't like really like definitively say so. So I think it works. But I think there's like a fundamental like like there's a foundation. Um sorry, I fucking just woke up. I'm trying to get my mind correct how I want to work things. Um <laughs> I think the problem isn't just the Otsusuki, it's what they represent. And I think their entities can represent the same problem that the Otsusuki do without them actually being Otsusuki. That's how I would say it. So, so um, yeah, so in, in, this, in this instance, um, n- number one, I think that the, these divine trees may actually be like Otsusuki. I actually think Otsusuki may evolve from Tintails. I have like an idea about this, but that's just an, an aside. Um, I can't like say definitively as of right now. That's what I was saying earlier. I'm trying to say anyways, they but um, yeah, like them. Yeah, I, I I think um, 
Yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of evidence to say that they, not a lot, but there's some stuff to point to and say, hey, maybe O2 Suki stemmed from the tail, blah, 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 X, Y, and Z. I don't think it's like some like big brain thing. I think it's kind of obvious, but um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think they can just represent that. So yeah, the O2 Suki have a very personal, there's a very personal um, connection that Kawaki has with the O2 Suki. Obviously, Jigen, Momoshiki, Boruto, Mo, uh, Naruto. But ultimately, I mean, anybody can represent what they are for Kawaki. I mean, a Shinobi can do that. Like, I don't know, fucking uh, Donzo could have been that for him, right? So, yeah. Not true, but one of the things that kind of opened my eyes to the possibility that Kawaki might not be looking like that, he might be completely emotional, was Cold came to the Hidden Leaf Village and was doing pretty much what Otsuka members do, and Kawaki's number one target was kind of still bored, so. Yeah, well, you have to um, look at the situation when he arrived, um, uh, Cole was already kind of down and out, and then Borto was the one over him. So of course he's going to like go for Borto, but then he's also talking about what he can do against a code in his current situation, or at least what he thinks he can do against that weakened uh, code. So I, I I think it was more so the the main threat here is uh, Borto. But when Code tried to escape, Kawaki cut him off, and he tried to uh, he was engaging with Code. Code just finessed him. But yeah, oh, that's true. That's true. I just feel like he had a lot more smoke for Boruto, who was like helping everyone, everyone, while Cole was actually doing Otsuki stuff. But I give you comfort though. Yeah, I think for for Kawaki, I mean Boruto's existence is Otsuki stuff in general. Um, but Cole, I mean, he just attacked the village, and the first thing you see is Kawaki engaging with them, and then even before then, Kawaki's a part of some like squad that tracks down belt marks for three plus years and like tries to mitigate that you know, potential threat until it actually pops up in that invasion in chapter one. So like he's been dealing with cold in, in, in certain ways for three plus years with the claw marks. And then it finally manifests and he fights the claw grimes and then like, you know, um, get slammed down or X, Y, and Z. I think that's more like the tin tails manifesting for the first time. And then beyond that, he shows up Cold's already like down. So it seems like boards kind of dealt with the threat more or less. And then, um, so yeah, it makes sense to me. His primary focus in that instance would be boards. So, and then, like, the narrative stuff kicks in as well. Like, they, you know, brothers meeting again for three years. But then, again, he, he did engage with Cole. Cole was just, in, even in his weakened state, Cole was just finessing Kwaki to the point where he was able to escape. But it, it was interesting. But yeah. I don't, know. I don't know if he was just finessing Kwaki. He was pulling out some moves that Kwaki just haven't really seen before. He didn't really think about it. That's That's all that happened to Kwaki. All he, all he did was up all he did was just jump into a belt mark. I mean, mark. This, <laughs> that's where he just he been doing that you, for like you know, bar. <laughs> he, 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 he got to protect his boy. His, yeah. uh, hey, ain't no, I'm just spitting facts. I'm letting y'all know. Yeah, I keep trying. He to didn't do like, anything different. We just didn't do nothing. No facts. We know the claw grounds were hype hopping out belts. He literally got choke slammed by one prior to that, and then also um, it just claw marks. So, and then like this cold was so weak, and he got knocked out his karma. <laughs> it's not. It's not a Kawaki. It's not a Kawaki topic right now, bro. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. 